Cycling can get expensive, but not all things are worth spending the big bucks on. So today in this video, I wanna look at five things that you should really consider spending your money on and five things that you could probably save on. Okay, let's go, starting with the things that you should definitely invest in. Number one is a GPS bike computer. There's probably been three things that have totally transformed my cycling. And the first of these is a cycling computer. Specifically, I'm talking about a GPS unit like this one. This is the Wahoo Element Bolt. Before I had one of these, I used to just plan really simple rides because I didn't want to go out and get lost or have to pull my phone out and check maps every couple of minutes just to see if I was on the right track. But since getting one of these, I can go into something like Commute, which if you've not used before, is an incredible online platform where you can easily plan a route. And then all you have to do is download it onto this and away you go. You get turn by turn navigation every step of the way easy. Not only that, you get to see things like distance traveled, average speed, your heart rate if you're also wearing a heart rate monitor. So this thing just makes the whole experience of cycling much more enjoyable and stress-free. This in particular has a lot of extra features but I'm not going to go into that because there's loads of other good videos that do that. But get yourself a GPS computer, it's going to make your riding so... all right mate. It's going to make your riding so much more enjoyable. Okay, this one might be a little bit controversial, but number two is a turbo trainer. So this is the second of those three things that completely transformed my cycling. Essentially, they're fairly small units that you can put your bike onto and it allows you to cycle indoors. Over the winter, especially in the UK here, motivation to get outside can be really quite low. Using something like Zwift or Wahoo's system, you can do a planned workout that requires very little in the way of preparation. And you can do some like really good workouts in less than an hour. Or if you're the kind of person that's more motivated by competition, there's a bunch of races, events that you can get stuck into. Not all turbo trainers are made equal though. I have the Wahoo Kicker, but I used to have a couple of cheaper trainers before then. And when I used to ride on those cheaper ones, I used to get pains in my feet and my knees and it just became another barrier for entry. I didn't want to use it because it was uncomfortable. But the kicker is incredible. It literally feels as close to riding outside as you can probably get indoors. It also measures your power, which is a great tool for training and also tracking your fitness. Training with power is the third thing that transformed my cycling, but I'm gonna leave that to another video. Number three is quality bib shorts. Cycling clothes in general are, are worth investing in, but a good pair of bib shorts is definitely the first and most important piece of clothing. If you've never worn a pair of these before, then I get that they can look a little bit strange or maybe feel uncomfortable. But if you're looking to do some longer rides, like anything over an hour, then these things will quickly become your best friend. Number four is shoes. Out of this entire list, these could probably be the most important of all. It took me so many years to get this right and I went through a lot of pairs of shoes before I did. For the majority of cyclists, having the wrong shoe is probably the most likely cause of things like saddle discomfort, soreness in the feet and the knees, and so it really pays to get this right. Your feet are the main power transferring component of your body, right? So having the right pair of shoes not only aids comfort on the bike, but also makes sure that all of that power gets transferred into the pedals, into the drivetrain, and helping to propel you going forward. There's no right shoe for everyone, I don't think. I think it's a very personal and specific thing, so it's more about finding the right shoe for your feet. So if you've got slim feet, find a slim shoe. If you've got wide feet, find a wide shoe. I would definitely opt for a carbon sole if you can afford it, just because it's super rigid and feels great on the bike. If you're in a position to be able to try lots of different shoes, then do that and just Use feel to figure out what fits well. But the best thing that you can do is go to a bike fitter. Get them to measure your feet and suggest a shoe that is the right fit for you. I had a bike fit at the start of this year from Dan at UK Bike Fit and he even suggested that I have insoles in my shoes because of the shape of my feet. And now I've just got incredible comfort in my shoes. And when I'm on the bike, I don't even think about my feet or my shoes, which I guess is ultimately the goal. So get yourself a really good pair of fitting shoes Maybe experiment with insoles. Happy feet is happy riding. Okay, so the fifth and final thing that I definitely think is worth your money is latex inner tubes. Now this is probably a road bike specific one. If you've got a gravel bike or a mountain bike, you should be running tubeless. If you're not running tubeless, that would be my tip. You should be running tubeless. But for road bikes, 
Inner tubes are probably the best way to go, at least at the moment. Most bikes come with a butyl inner tube, and so a latex inner tube is a little bit of an upgrade. The main benefit is that they're lighter, and some manufacturers claim that you can get up to five and a half watts advantage using one of these versus a butyl inner tube. So we're basically talking about speed, but I also think that there's a feel difference as well. When I put these on my bike, it just felt better. I don't know if that's a placebo thing. There's something to do with how they sound that's just really cool. And if you feel good, then you ride faster, right? For around 10 to 15 pounds each, I don't think that there's a better upgrade in terms of the performance her money spent than upgrading to latex inner tubes. And although you could stop with some latex inner tubes, really pairing them with a high quality tire set, something like the Continental GP 5000s for example, and some good wheels, you're gonna notice a huge difference in terms of how your bike feels and really the speed that you can move at. I'm not gonna get into wheels today, that's a whole other video, but as a starting point, get some latex inner tubes. Okay, now for five things that probably aren't worth your money. Number one, an expensive group set. It's so easy to get sucked into the allure of having a shiny, high-end component set, the sweet sound of electronic shifting. But for the majority of riders, the marginal gains are just not worth the extra cost. I mean, it's so expensive to buy Dura Ace in comparison to something like 105. And maybe 10 years ago, things would have been different, but today, something like the Shimano 105 group set is good for just about everyone, unless you're a pro or you're competing in some way. The difference in shifting performance compared to a high-end group set like Otegra or Dura Ace Di2 yeah, it's not quite as good, but for the everyday rider, you're just really not going to notice. And then the weight difference, well, really it's quite marginal. You know, you might as well just not carry that extra snack bar in your back pocket because that's basically the equivalent to the weight that you save. And then on top of that, when it comes to replacing components, you know, things that wear like your chain or your cassette, it's so much nicer to know that you have just a cheap 105 part that you need to buy instead of some really expensive Dura Ace part. Like, don't get me wrong, I would love uh, an Altegra DI2 group set. I really would, and maybe one day I will. But if you're just starting out and you're looking to figure out where to spend your money, then don't spend it on a high-end group set. It's just purely a luxury. For the money that you would save in buying something like 105 against Dura Ace, you could buy pretty much everything else on this list, which I guarantee you is just a much better way to spend your money. Number two is an integrated bar and stem system. As a beginner, you're probably gonna want to try a bunch of different handlebars for the fit, the width, how they feel, also some different stem lengths as well, just to get your bike fit right. And doing those little changes doesn't cost too much, but if you've got an integrated bar and stem system, you're then talking three, 400 pounds just to experiment with the different sizes. Once you know the ideal sizing, then yeah, go for it. Get that integrated, clean looking cockpit at the front of your bike. Listen, I'm a fan, I love that clean look. But if you're not sure about your sizes and you're maybe just getting your first bike, then don't buy integrated. Number three is cleaning supplies. You only have to take a trip to your local bike shop to see the endless amount of cleaning supplies. And if you've got a really high-end expensive bike, then you probably do want to use some of those things. But for most of us, we can get by with just soapy water and a can of GT85. Number four is ceramic bearings. Please, just don't. Number five is pedals. Now we've talked about shoes and shoes and cleat position are really important and definitely worth investing in, but I'm talking specifically about the pedal. Pedal manufacturers such as Luke or Shimano will have a range of pedals, so the Luke Keels or the Shimano SPD range, and those pedals will come in cheap variants all the way up to carbon titanium. An entry level option from a reputable manufacturer is definitely the best way to go. Okay, so there's my five things worth spending your money on and five things that are probably just worth saving on. But I'd love to hear from you. What do you think is worth spending on and what have you saved on in the past? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching guys and if you like this video and want to see more of this kind of stuff, I've got some new ideas so hit like down below to let me know that you've enjoyed it and click subscribe and I'll be sure to make some more of these videos. Catch you in the next one.